We're joined by Hatem Diab, Managing Partner at Gerber Kawasaki Wealth and Investment Management. Hatem, great to see you. I, I think you are in the camp that after all the delays and all the hype that Elon Musk should have provided more details when it comes to the robo-taxi. Yeah, 100%. It's good to see you, Andrew. Uh, there was so much hype going into this event. Like, we we're all expecting so much information about developments on software, FSD. And what we got is uh, a game of smoke and mirrors, uh, robots that were basically assisted by humans. Uh, we got zero details on the new software, on the new app that Tesla should have for FSD. So so I think a, a huge disappointment and you've seen the, the stock getting punished as a result. When you say FSD, of course, full self-driving, um, yeah. is Tesla even seen as a leader now? I mean, it's got these deep pocketed rivals, Waymo teaming up with yeah. Uber. Um, yeah. it, it, there's a lot of powerful players in the space already. Yeah, very good point. So, so basically, Elon has staked the future of Tesla on autonomy, on full self-driving. And Tesla currently, what it stands is, at best, level three. You need to get to level five to have full autonomy. Uh, Waymo, which is owned uh, by Google, uh, has full autonomy right now. Uh, albeit, you know, they use different hardware and they're geofenced, so they only go in, different, in, in certain areas of the city, like in LA and Phoenix and, and San Francisco. But they seem to be much, much more further than Tesla uh, in, 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 in the space. Uh, and Tesla was first here, right? They've been here for, for, for 10 years trying to do this or trying to figure this out. And, and we, they don't seem to have figured out just yet. Um, you started off uh, casting a bit of shade on these robots that, uh, these walking robots that apparently some of them are just remote controlled. Would Elon be well advised to avoid stunts like that, do you think? Elon is Elon, you know what I mean? He, you know, it, it, it's really interesting. You know, I, I was a huge fan for many, many years because, you know, you can't deny how, what an amazing, you know, set of invention and things that he's accomplished. Uh, but I think right now he's just distracted. I think uh, what he's doing politically is really hurting the brand a little bit. And, uh, uh, but, you know, he throws a good, good party and, and, and Elon fans loved it. As you say he's a, he enjoys tormenting liberals on Twitter, <laughs> but a lot of them are Tesla owners, so maybe he's uh, aggravating his customer base. Hundred percent. I mean, at, at, at the very least, fifty percent of his customer base. You know, it used to be an anecdotal that uh, people are not buying Tesla because of the political stuff, but now we're seeing it in the numbers. Delivery numbers are down, and and you know, and and it's the whole the whole EV space is struggling. So you know, creating more anxiety around the brand that just doesn't help. We we obviously we talk about ride hailing a lot because it's exciting the idea of getting in a, in a uh, an autonomous cab and in places like Phoenix Arizona you can already do that San Francisco, yeah. but you know that the trucking business uh, is an even bigger market and autonomy could be huge there. Absolutely. So ride hailing is maybe I don't know 50, 60 billion a year business unless the unit economics go down quite a bit. But trucking is a trillion dollar business. It's massive, right? Because and it's also a really hard job to do, right? People don't want to do it. It's dangerous. Uh, so I think if we can figure out full self-driving and we can move goods and people all across the country, across the world uh, with autonomy, with full autonomy, this is going to be massive, but we're just nowhere close to being there. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I have heard that said. I mean, you could have um, autonomous trucks running in convoys on highways. I guess it gets tricky when you get into the cities. Maybe you'd need a person to take over. Correct. Highways are a lot easier than cities. Also, different weather conditions are important. Uh, so there's a lot of other conditions they have to figure out. Uh, Tesla is basically trying to do it just with uh, with with cameras uh, and, and 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 neural networks within the car. Uh, there is uh, lidar, which is which is a kind of a way of using ra radar to be able to to see these conditions. And Tesla doesn't want to use this because they're expensive. So I think I, whoever is going to figure out, we don't know if it's going to be with or without lidar, and that's a big question. Yeah. So the lidar sensor 
gets data from hundreds of thousands of laser pulses each each second. I mean, I, as far as I know, it's, it's in my Honda CRV. It lets me avoid crashing into people ahead <laughs> um, when I'm, you know, texting on my phone, joking. No, there's nothing funny about distracted <laughs> driving. But um, you say that Tesla has avoided that technology because yeah. of cost. Yeah, Tesla's whole premise from the beginning was they're going to do it with just vision. Uh, so being able to really understand how the world works and using using cameras and be able to use neural networks or compu compute to be able to solve those 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 problems. Um, and they haven't done it, right? So and that's why they're behind. Uh, some other companies like Waymo, for example, is using LiDAR. Uh, and they seem to have figured out uh, how how to solve that that equation. But you know, when you use LiDAR, you, you have a lot more expense, a lot, a lot more cost. So your unit uh, per mile driven goes uh, goes go, unit price per mile driven goes up. Would you be a buyer of Tesla um, with your risk tolerant money right now? It's an expensive stock. It's a really expensive stock. So we're not adding to Tesla right now, unfortunately. Hatem, it's always great hearing from you. Thank you very much.